people love lotteries. We're just like everybody else in the world. We love to gamble. In the U.S., households spend about $600 a year on the lottery. To put that into context, we spend more on lottery tickets than we do on milk or beer in the U.S. Pricing savings accounts are basically a combination of a regular savings account and a lottery. The difference from a regular savings account is instead of paying interest, the bank holds a lottery each month and a lucky account winner wins the jackpot. It's safe, it's secure, but it changes your payoff from a certain risk-free interest to a highly skewed lottery type of a payoff. One reaction I get is, that's the greatest idea I've ever heard. And the other reaction I get is, we're like tricking people into saving and we're like preying on how much they like to gamble. When we started the project, I was definitely skeptical that this was a good idea. We gathered data about pricing savings accounts from the third largest bank in South Africa. The question we wanted to test is, is this attractive for a different type of person than who uses regular accounts? We looked at people who didn't have any other kind of bank account and compared them to those who already had a bank account. And we also looked at people who had taken out a lot of debt from this particular bank and compared them to those who had a lot of savings. We also looked at sales of lottery tickets and compared those to deposits going into the new pricing savings accounts to see if we're attracting people from the national lottery into these pricing savings accounts. Based on what we found, it looks like pricing savings accounts are especially attractive to financially fragile people. It seems that people really do shift from spending money on the lottery to saving when they use these accounts. One reason is it's hard to buy half of a refrigerator. If I need a refrigerator, I need a big amount of money. That large amount of money is hard to come by in a regular savings account. And this is what economists would call a poverty trap. And you need some sort of a shock, like a jackpot, to really move you out of the trap and change your socioeconomic position. The FDIC, they estimate that something like a third of U.S. households don't have a savings account at all. We're talking like almost 100 million people are like one major car repair or one surgery away from pretty serious financial distress. It seems like this product sort of is geared especially towards them. And like that's very encouraging that we can help that group of people. These accounts are actually good deals for the banks as well, right? Because they can get deposits for actually less than if they had to pay regular interest. And so therefore the bank has no incentive to transition people to a CD or a regular account or any other type of account because they're getting funds very cheaply this way. But then the challenge going forward is, can we then transition people to more standard savings products? Will banks do it on their own or do we need some sort of regulation or, or something like that to try to help people make that transition? And I think that's an open question for sure. <laughs>